Alright, hello, hello everybody. Uh, here for another study. Got done with uh, chapter 4 last time. Uh, starting in chapter 5 this time. Starting in chapter 5 in a new study. Uh, it says says they Hold on here. It says they they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of of the Gar Gad Garadians. Notice he said they came over. They that means they finished the trip, just like Jesus said in chapter in in the previous chapter. Where he said, let us go over. He didn't say, let us try to go over. He said, let us go over. They finished the trip. Just as he said. There was one, there, there was once again, no stating that he would try. Maybe they would complete it. Maybe they wouldn't if it was in the cards. Or if it was fate. They, he said, let us go over. Verse uh, five, chapter five, verse two, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Okay, a, a demon is coming out to meet them, and when he saw when he saw the when he saw Christ, the demon fell down, basically fell down and starting started worshiping him, starting worshiping Christ. Okay? And then, verse 6, it says, And when he saw Jesus far off, he ran and worshipped him. That, that's what I'm saying. Because uh, he had come out, and he was full of demons. Okay, but let, let, let me go on. It says, all right. It says, And when, Jesus, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. That was verse 6. Notice he, he, the demon possessed man, saw him. Okay? He saw him from afar and came and worshiped him. Okay? As we are seeing, as we are seeing, the demons knew exactly who he was. And they worshiped him. They knew exactly who he was. All the while, all the while, we sit in our churches, in our societies, debating and dittering about, and our hubris, because we think we're wiser than them, and we explain the word of God away. Even churches do this. We we think all these progressive churches came from. We fail to worship, even though we know who He is. It's not that hard figure out. Okay, we know who he is. We're not fooling anybody. Let me let me let me read something to you. Let me let me read something to you here. Uh, I'm turning to Romans. Give me a minute here. I'm turning to Romans. Romans 1 Romans 1 20 and 22 for the invisible things of them, for I'm sorry, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clear, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his inter, eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish foolish hearts was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become us fools. In case you don't know, this is happening all around us. Okay? This is happening all around us. There's no way we can look at the universe and say 
this came from an, an unguided process. If we look at the size of our sun, where our planet is, and this it's, it's in it's in the so-called Goldilocks Goldilocks zone. Okay, that means that means this is a perfect spot for life to be. This didn't happen by chance. Okay? You're a fool if you think you are. I mean you're a fool if you think it did. Okay? The one that is the word spoke it into into existence. John. The book of John. Chapter 1. Uh, this is going to be a little long. Chapter 1. Verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whom, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, the bare witness of the light, all that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That the light, that the true light, which lights every man that comes in the world, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. Not. But as many as, may as received, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, which were born. Not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And he and we beheld his glory. And the glory as the as the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him. And Christ saying, "This, uh, this he of whom I spoke. This is whom of, of he I spoke. He that comes after me is pre preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time." The only, but the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Okay, and we are naive and blind. We are naive and blind. Okay, we say, we say in the West, we we we're not, but we are, we are, by accepting foolishness. That something came out of nothing, unguided. Okay, we explain Christ away, Christ and his power away. Never mind what, what the word I just read says. Okay, we explain away, but deep down we know. We can see this because there... We can see this because of nature, but man turns, explains it away. Okay, I've I've heard scientists say that they see, see see proof of God in the constellations, but they refuse to believe. Okay, there is no obedience of the word. Seven, and he cried with a loud voice, the man possessed with demon, and said, "What have I do with you, Jesus, you son of, of the Most High God?" I assure you, by God, that you torment me not. Notice, they understood he was, they, notice they understood who he was, understood that he had the power to punish them. Okay? 
Notice they refer to him as the son of the Most High God. There's something for you right there. Some of you in, in the other cultures that don't believe in God or Christ. The Son of God means singular, okay? They understood who he was. Okay, they understood exactly who he, who he was. But sometimes I don't think we do. Okay, I see how some of us live. I see how you dress. There is no way you can read those scriptures and think that some of this is okay. For you to go out and act just like the world. Do the things that they do. So do, do we really? Do we really believe and understand but notice, they didn't treat him like a lovable sugar daddy in the sky. The sugar daddy that loves everybody. Oh, daddy, please give me this. Daddy, daddy. Why do we think that we can do this? I would, personally, I would argue that we do it because many of us aren't where we need to be in Christ. Okay? Okay. I would argue that many of us, we do this because many of us, not all, not all, but many of us aren't even saved at all. That's what I would argue. Okay? I, that, that's why I would, that's the reason that I would argue we do this. Treat him like a sugar daddy in the sky. Verse 8, verse 8. And I'll end with this. For he said to them, for he said to him, Come out, you unclean spirit. Jesus ordered the unclean spirit to come out of this man. Notice his authority. He did not ask, Do you want to come out? Or notice he didn't ask the gentleman if he wanted to have a demon cast out. He commanded. And yes, yes. I know of Wesleyan, I'm sorry, I know of some preachers who are in Wesleyan de denomination. You can find them online. Well, a singular preacher. You can find them online. He teaches that Jesus asked for permission from everyone before he acted. He even believes that Jesus asked dead Lazarus for permission to raise dead Lazarus from the grave before he had raised Lazarus from the grave. Did you get that? He believes that Jesus asked dead Lazarus for permission to raise dead Lazarus from the grave before he raised dead Lazarus from the grave. I know people like this. Okay? This is ridiculous if you believe that. It should be obvious that that Jesus never didn't have to ask anybody for permission. This preacher's only twisting the Bible to defend his extreme doctrine of free will. Because that's what, some, that's what a lot of Wesleyans believe in. Free will. Some take it to the extreme and believe in complete and total free will. Okay? Jesus, but anyhow, Jesus clearly didn't and does not ask for permission. This is something often, often world religions can't show in their prophets. Their messengers never did these things with such power. Okay? They never did. Therefore, Jesus Christ is the only one worthy of our worship and praise. That is, pray, and we who read and study the Bible know this. But anyhow, let me end there. Thank you. Uh, good day and God bless you.